Hello everyone, welcome to Snap Take. I'm Glazer of the Snap Judgments Podcast, the official podcast of Marvel Snap Zone. And yesterday, today as I'm recording this, ain't gonna lie to you, was OTA. We're gonna talk about that OTA quickly, and I'm gonna give you a busted deck, a deck that's already rolling on ladder and winning infinite tickets. So stay tuned for that. Check the chapters at the bottom if you're not if you already got your fill of OTA coverage and just go straight to the deck. Won't break my heart if that's what you want. In addition, make sure you subscribe, make sure you like. We've got the best decks in Marvel Snap way ahead of the meta. So make sure you're checking it out. What we do on this channel is we get people to infinite. We help people win games. Trust me. Check the comments. You'll see plenty of testimony over the next day of people being like, oh yeah, we played your decks. We ranked up. We played your decks. We got infinite. That's how this works. All right, let's talk OTA. First, victory lap time for Dr. Doom. Doom is nerfed from a 6-5 that makes a bunch of different Doom bots that are exact same uh, power as Doom. And his nerf is that his Doom bots now have four power, not five. Three weeks ago, before anyone was talking about this, we had Educated Collins on the Snap Judgments podcast. It was our first episode on the Marvel Snap Zone YouTube. I'm going to, um, I mean, look look up. There's a little tag. You can click that link. In that episode, we're talking about all the best decks, and Doom is in so many. Then I'm like, oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. The first and only person in the meta that is on record as saying, oh, they're going to nerf Doom. They're going to get doomed. Second Dinner has shown us time and again that when a card is really highly played, sooner or later, it gets nerfed. They don't want the best card in the game or the card that goes in every deck to remain a static thing with exactly one exception. That exception is Shang-Chi because the entire game is balanced around the existence of Shang-Chi being the card that says there are other strategies that are viable besides just going over the top. But Doom, in particular, was bound for the, a nerf. That nerf has come. Is Doom still good? Yes. Is Doom nearly as good? No. Um, that extra power on Doom, anyone who's played him can tell you, is exceedingly important. Very often, stealing that extra one power in the lane that's like Stormed or Spider-Man is how you win it. Count out that math in advance, and losing one power is a big deal. Is the card bad or unplayable? Absolutely not. Is the card still where it was as arguably the best card in the game? I don't think so. I think that's probably Kitty now. Um, I would be very surprised if Kitty isn't due for a nerf relatively soon based on how this has gone. Going to get on the record and again, be the first person to tell you that this is coming. Red Skull is uh, buffed from a 5-12 to a 5-14. He goes back to his previous of giving opponents cards at the location plus 2 power from giving them plus 1. I'm going to say straight up, I absolutely hate this. I always hate this. Not for any gameplay reasons. And this is going to make some of you turn off the channel. And if it does, I'm sorry, but that's fine. I don't love role-playing as a Nazi. I've got friends and family members that were killed by Nazis. It's not like a fictional thing. Like Nimrod is a racist machine, right? But it's allegorical. Red Skull is like literally worked with Hitler. Um, Hernam Zola is literally like Dr. Mengel, right? Like these are um, characterizations like of genuine people who tortured and killed thousands, millions of people. I don't love that. Like they keep making this card better. Uh, that said, it is better. Sherry Red Skull is back. Is it the best deck in the meta? Nope. I don't think it can beat Bounce. Like, at all. I don't think it's usually going to beat Lockjaw. I think that the meta has caught up to the power of it. I don't think this changes that. I think it's a good deck. I think it's a very good deck. But I think it's much, much, much more beatable than it was. Nimrod got plus one power. Just 5-5 five, five to 5-6. Five, it is the simplest change of this update. Maybe it makes it playable. I don't think Destroy really needs this, though. Because Destroy is in a really, really great spot. Uh, I put that Destroy deck out a few days ago that was crushing a few, I guess, week ago, week and a half ago, that was crushing uh, Conquest and Ladder. And I believe, I want to say Molt recently. Hey, Molt. Uh, Molt was on the podcast last uh, week. That's over again on the Snap Zone YouTube. Uh, so big fan of Molt. But 
He put out a destroy deck that has repopularized the archetype. Cool. Destroy is always going to be good. Um, I still don't think it wants a Nimrod. I think that Nimrod's just a little bit inconsistent for it. Inconsistent for what that deck really, really wants to be doing. And um, at least until X-23 comes out to give it more energy, having turn 5 as that last big destroy turn, that last push, honestly, to get death down to 0 and get a bunch of things out for null, um, I don't think Nimrod's good enough for that. This does probably make some Galactus strategies at least a little bit better, but I don't know. This isn't my favorite change. Uh, hopefully I'm wrong. This might, um, safety is better at building decks than everyone than I am, but like than everyone. And he thinks there might be something there with Nimrod and Negasonic Teenage Warhead. So I'm willing to give that space to breathe. Let's see. Last change is the big one. Nick Fury goes from a 5-7 to a four or five still same effect still adding three uh six cost cards to your hand but now he's so much cheaper and easier to play stats take a hit yes five is a lot less than seven but five is mu is so much uh is not as much less than seven as four is less than five and a lot of that is a you have two turns left in the game to get those six costs out and b zabu is a card so you can get this out on three if you wanted. If you have a Quinjet out, you can also at that point um, play a six on five and a six on six. And even that six on six leaves you with an extra mana because, excuse me, an extra mana, an extra energy because um, anything that Nick Fury makes is going to be five uh, energy as long as that Quinjet is out. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful change. Second Dinner also said that they released this to time with Secret Invasion, which is now on Disney+. Plus. Um, I was a little iffy about a change based on a TV show, and upon further consideration, upon further discussion with various friends in the community, I mean, we all knew Nick Fury needed a buff like this, right? It wasn't a big surprise. All Second Dinner did was hold off on that change until it made the most sense. They should probably publicize this more, not less, because this card is actually really cool now. How cool is it? Well, it is today's deck. Today's deck is our boy Fazer. Hey, Fazer Snaps. You got to check him out on Twitter. You got to check him out on uh, Twitch. I'm going to link him in the description. Fazer's Fury. Get it? It's a pun. It's alliteration and a pun. I'm very proud of this stupid name. All right. Fazer's Fury is a Nick Fury deck. You can see that this is the old Nick Fury um, cost. He's a four or five now, I promise. This is a Nick Fury deck that tries to take advantage of Fury along with a Dino Hawk build. Um, the play patterns are relatively straightforward here. Almost everyone has played Devil Dinosaur. Um, if you are at a point in the game to have Dark Hawk, you've played Dark Hawk. You want to go something like Korg, Zabu, Rock Slide, Dark Hawk, Devil Dino. Um, this adds an alternate play pattern of Quinjet, um, Zabu, Nick Fury, um, whatever, Iron Iron Ladder, Devil Dino, into um into whatever sixes in Devil Dino, right? Or Mystique and his um these other cards. It ends up being really, really powerful because you never know what sixes you're gonna get. The sixes can completely turn their game on that the game on their head, and your opponent can't plan for them. Colson adds that extra bit of variance there as well, um, making it so that your opponent A these cards benefit off Quinjet to the uh, four and five that Colson are three and four with Quinjet out. Quinjet is so important um, that like, well, I guess they could be even cheaper, right? Like you could make, if you went um, Quinjet into Zabu into Colson, your uh, four would be a two. So that's incredible. But um, the like sheer pot amount of stuff that you can get out of Colson and Fury means your opponent's going to have a hard time play planning and you've got devil dino so that like if it's not giving you anything you want to play you can still go wide now chung chi is obviously in this deck this deck has a lot of viability but it doesn't necessarily always go as tall as other decks right like um your lockjaw opponent drops an evolved hulk you're gonna need that chung chi to take care of it in all likelihood unless you pack devil dino and dark hawk in one lane but then you're gonna have trouble winning elsewhere iron lad um has fundamentally all 
good hits in this deck. Uh, I guess Shang-Chi could be a nothing burger of a hit, right? You don't necessarily want to hit Shang-Chi and you don't want to hit Jeff on six. But basically every other hit at least has some value. Um, if you know Mystique is in deck, do yourself a favor and try and play Iron Lad after an ongoing, a Dark Hawk or a Double Dino. You'll feel better about it. Uh, there are two upper series cards in this. They are Jeff and uh, Iron Lad. Neither one is at all necessary. If you're changing Jeff, I spoke with Fazer about this. Um, check out Luke Cage. Luke Cage is just really good with High Evolutionary still all over the meta. Um, you can also go with something like Nightcrawler. There's an argument that Nightcrawler or... Um, like, I don't know, uh, Nebula would be right here. Totally fine. You're basically picking the best in slot type of card for that spot. Iron Lad could be replaced by two things, I think. There's two things I'm really, really looking at to replace Iron Lad. The first of those is America Chavez. There's a lot of early drop. I want seeing them on curve is really nice. And the second thing, oh, also, you're not worried about her six cost because you'll basically always have other things to play at the end of the game between Colson Fury and the other cards. Um, the other thing Iron Lad could be is Arrow. There's that beautiful new Arrow pack, so a lot of you are just getting Arrow. Arrow is a really nice card here because a lot of what can beat this deck is things that just go too tall when you don't see your Shang-Chi. Well, your Arrow can pull that card over to the same lane as the other big thing and sort of resolve that problem for you. Uh, Fazer was something like 18 and 3 with this deck and hit an infinity ticket immediately with it. It's a super duper cool deck. I urge you to check it out. Also, as you're watching this a little bit later in the day, uh, I'm going to have an article up on Marvel Snap Zone. It is the weekly news catch up, and tomorrow is Sleeper Decks of the Week. So make sure you check that out too. Really appreciate the support. Don't forget to like and sub. You know you want to, you're going to find value. How else are you going to stay ahead of the Marvel Snap Curve? We got you covered. Thanks for watching. See you tomorrow for another Snap Take.